President Biden has this warning. Donald Trump's campaign is obsessed with the past, not the future. He's willing to sacrifice our democracy, put himself in power. And he's firing Joe Biden's accusation back at him. Now we have a president who's a great danger to democracy. He really is. He's a great, he is a danger to de democracy and uh, at a level like few people have seen. Trump's not provided convincing evidence to support this claim, but his own actions raise questions about his impact on US democracy. Not least his false claim that the 2020 presidential election was stolen from him, a claim we heard the day after voting finished. This is a case where they're trying to steal an election. They're trying to rig an election, and we can't let that happen. The election wasn't rigged, but again and again, Donald Trump falsely claimed US democracy had failed to function. Trump, Trump. Weeks later on January the 6th, just as lawmakers prepared to certify Joe Biden's victory, Trump held a rally in Washington, DC, and again said the election was rigged. <laughs> Less than two hours later, his supporters stormed Congress. Three years on, Donald Trump faces criminal charges that allege a wide-ranging conspiracy to overturn the results of the election. But despite this, despite his election claims being rejected by judges and election officials, still, Trump continues his attack on the credibility of America's democratic institutions. But if you go to his campaign website, you'll find this pitch to voters. Here's my plan to dismantle the deep state and reclaim our democracy from Washington corruption once and for all. To Trump, the deep state's a network of government bureaucrats working to obstruct him and his policies. And Trump's plan to deal with this involves Trump having more power. The New York Times has reported that the former president and his backers aim to strengthen the power of the White House and limit the independence of federal agencies. This comes in various forms. Here's one. First, I will immediately reissue my 2020 executive order restoring the president's authority to remove rogue bureaucrats, and I will wield that power very aggressively. This would allow the president to remove thousands of career civil servants and replace them with loyalists. Uh, Donald Trump and his people want to be much more effective in enacting policies than they were the last time around. They don't want their policies to be undermined uh, by non-political or non-appointed government workers. A process to find potential replacements is already underway. It's part of what's called Project 2025. Dozens of conservative organizations have produced a plan for a new Republican presidency. What we're doing is systematically preparing to march into office and bring a new army of aligned, trained, and essentially weaponized conservatives ready to do battle against the deep state. The idea is that this marching, weaponizing, and battling will be done at huge scale. Axios reports Project 2025 aims to install a pre-vetted pro-Trump army of up to 54,000 loyalists across government. That figure's not been confirmed, but it's worth putting it in context. In the United States, we already have 4,000 political appointees. And if you compare that to any other democracy in the world, it's a large, large, large number. In other words, to go from 4,000 to potentially tens of thousands of political appointees would take the US well beyond other Western democracies. And it would not be merit that would define employment, but rather your loyalty to the winner of the presidency. That would not only threaten our democracy, but truly undermine the ability of our government to meet the pressing needs that it has to deal with very real problems. But having the ability to replace civil servants is what Trump wants, as is his ambition to expand presidential powers elsewhere, take federal departments and agencies. Already the president appoints the heads of many of these, but some government agencies are independent and Trump wants to change that. I will bring the independent regulatory agencies such as the FCC and the FTC back under presidential authority as the Constitution demands. Such a move would be unusual. These are agencies normally apart from politics. But this push for more presidential power isn't a surprise, because Trump has a long-held belief that the US Constitution gives the president full power over all parts of government. He talked about this while in office. Then I have an Article 2 where I have the right to do whatever I want as president, but I don't even talk about that. This interpretation of the Constitution is strongly contested, as is another claim made in 2022. After, again, saying the last election was stolen, Donald Trump posted 
A massive fraud of this type and magnitude allows for the termination of all rules, regulations and articles, even those found in the Constitution. The termination of all articles of the Constitution justified by a false claim of a stolen election. That feels relevant as we assess Trump's impact on US democracy. So does his desire to use the presidency to settle scores. I will appoint a real special prosecutor to go after the most corrupt president in the history of the United States of America, Joe Biden, and the entire Biden crime family. This description's not based on evidence. And this pattern of Trump threatening opponents with the law has become familiar. But that doesn't make it normal in American democracy. Donald Trump has come forward and said that he wants to use his own Justice Department to prosecute his political enemies in the way that he feels he has been prosecuted politically by Joe Biden and Joe Biden's Justice Department. But that would be a significant break from uh, American democratic traditions and, and judicial traditions going back a more than a century. Trump's also been sharing his view of American law and justice when referencing January the 6th. He's called the violent attack on the seat of US democracy a beautiful day. He's called the hundreds who've been jailed for what happened hostages. None of this has affected Trump's viability as a potential Republican presidential nominee, nor has the torrent of falsehoods that he continues to pour into America's political discourse. And you've been seeing what's going on. In the past few weeks, the radical left Democrats and their fake news allies have unveiled their newest hoax that Donald J. Trump and the Republican Party are in threat to democracy. Do you believe it? Would you believe that? Donald Trump asks as his supporters laugh. For some who've watched Trump in recent years, the answer is yes, they would believe that. And they're not laughing.